a 2012 Hyundai Elantra and the alternator shot but I just want to go over some basic tests and do a comparison of a before and after of the uh, oscilloscope here so we're going to check the connector uh, for the L terminal, C terminal and the FR terminal so we got the FR the fuel regulator the C for the computer and the L for the lamp and if you notice the light is coming on in the headlights here and I noticed with this vehicle when there's a malfunction with the alternator and that battery light star illuminating it's going to start flashing also with the headlights and let me see if I can I got a test light here just to show you that the lights on inside the vehicle this is basically going to emulate the same principles um, I do have a 12 volt source here going to the alligator clamp and if there's a malfunction with that bulb or the L terminal, the L terminal should ground out. Let's see. Get on that really quick. I had one. There we go. You see it's illuminating with the light. So let's one way I mean you can look at the headlights and see they're flashing uh, that's one way of indicating that there's a problem with your uh, Elantra if the alternator fails but um, we're going to look at the uh, waveform and compare the C terminal with the uh, field regulated terminal and we'll just we're just going to do a resistance value with the with the car or the key engine off, engine off and just get some basic values just for anybody that needs to utilize this in the future because it could be something with the computer or something wiring related but I know for a fact that this alternator is basically shot but just for future references we're just going to test this and just get some basic values and somebody can just jot them down and go from there alright as far as scan data go uh, we're going to look at uh, it's called the AMS alternator management system. This is the code here we, we normally would get if there's something wrong with the alternator. So it just says alternator management system, AMS, no battery voltage, and we got a P2503. So we're just going to go to the live data and all that information is stored in the PCM. And uh, it's basically like uh, what the good thing is if you diagnose it through the scan tool you get uh, desired versus actual so if you have a uh, oil control valve issue or anything has any expectation of that component has to be met by the PCM you can witness that in the computer here which makes diagnosing a lot easier than just having to hook up our oscilloscope or using a multimeter or just shooting a part at it but again I mean this is common uh, you get a battery light throw an alternator at it it works so state of battery so desired actual so we're going to pull all this stuff up here it's cold in here I gotta get some kerosene for my heater I ran out so the AMS alternator management system will typically stop and what that does why they have it on this car is to optimize performance and fuel economy alternators require it, it supports a lot of load once the uh, stator is excited and to aid in performance and help with efficiency they deactivate and reactivate the alternator depending on demand so that's why we will see AMS stop reason AMS stop reason so if I was to activate the headlamps we would see this go into a on state and uh, the same with these other ones the wiper or uh, blower max I mean these require a substantial load for what the vehicle requires uh, so it's like regenerative braking when I read the description of operation so when you desail it'll engage the alternator to make up whatever is potentially lost um, so the battery current MF, AMS battery volt well, let's go to temperature uh, state of charge that's determined typically by battery voltage so typically um, I guess if it takes a uh, 13 volts then it's going to know is at whatever percentage 
Uh, I'm I'm just 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 in the just the conjecture there. Uh, I do have a battery charger hooked up. That's why it's at 13 volts. When you are testing this, you want to take off that battery charger because it will mess up your your uh, your results. And I'm gonna pull that off shortly. So the battery uh, there's like a load detection on there, and it's right on the negative side of the battery post. There's a connector there, and what that measures. It you it takes that it does take that bit of information, the battery current and the temperature, and uh, it it utilizes that information to detect the load, and it helps assess how it should manage the alternator. So that could be a potential problem if you have any issues with your charging system. So, uh, but I'm sure when you do when this car does detect. A issue it probably bypasses it and allow the regulator to just operate naturally like any other vehicle is just my conjecture um, and I guess if it can't sustain itself then there's probably some some fault inside that alternator just my assumption I didn't make it so the the load detection again is on the battery on the negative side you'll see like a three pin connector on the battery terminal and again that measures the current and the temperature and we got the battery voltage here typically um, the computer is going to measure it through some other means that's something simple so the state of charge um, I'm gonna assume that it, it pretty much measures that just based off of voltage 12.6 is a perfectly charged battery and uh, I'm pretty sure it goes through a parameter in which it it has to see steady idle conditions for a certain period of time to determine the, the charge of it just my conjecture again um, but the main thing we want to look at here is the desired alternator voltage duty cycle versus the, the duty cycle from alternator PWM let's, uh, let's see if we can isolate those All right, here we are so before we start actually getting to the testing, uh, I'm going to start this car up and what should happen, these two numbers should be met. The car should see a, should have a desire to uh, expect the change and the duty cycle from alternator should meet that change. So these should match. If they're not matching and the computer is telling it what to do and it's not following instructions, then whatever the component is or something related to a communication problem with that component just basically need to be fired. Like I say, the desire versus actual, I look at like a secretary. If I'm the boss and I'm telling my secretary to work, she ain't doing what she's supposed to do, man, we might need to let her ass go. Put it, put it that way. So let's, I'm going to start up and we're going to look at the desire versus actual and that'll also aid in making a determination if we need to replace the alternator. And again, you disconnect the battery charger so it wouldn't mess up your results. Alright, here we go. So we have a 75% uh, desired and we got an 88% versus with the actual. Alright, one other thing you want to make sure is that your wire down here that your battery wire isn't damaged meaning that there's probably like a potential bad connection or there's a broken wire from here going to your battery and this goes to the positive side of the battery if your if your alternate is charging and it's not it doesn't have a good connection going straight to the battery then you're going to get a battery light also so this is this is the main main shebang here that gives you your 14 volts that the alternator produces and if the voltage diminishes and the battery is utilizing its own power it's going to be like the battery it's in your remote and just die out and it's not going to be efficient it's not going to operate like it's supposed to so you want to check that first and there's also a fusible link on that positive side make sure all your fuses are working appropriately but I'm just going to just check that really quick I'm going to go to the wire itself. Got 13 volts here on the nut. I'm going to go, I'm going to do a ohm test from the wire to the positive side of the battery. 
So from this battery wire to the positive side, I should have like two ohms, something, ins something insignificant. Let me see. Yep, I got two ohms there. If it shows up on the screen. There we go, by one ohm. So yeah, I can. I'm, I'm pretty confident I got a good battery connection there. Um, let's check the status of the L terminal, uh, the FR terminal, key on engine off. Right, key on engine off. We're gonna go to voltage. Let's see, let's I'm just gonna ground it. It's on the housing. I got a good ground here. So our L terminal is going to be the blue one. That's going to be the center one. Now, again, with the key key on, engine off, this is supposed to be grounded out. This middle wire here, this blue wire. And I should see no 12 volts because I'm grounded. Oh, you know what? That only applies when it's connected. Duh. So if this was connected, I should see ground because of how it interacts with the alternator. So now I should see no voltage, which I don't. So there's 1.2 volts. It's close to ground. I should work on getting a better ground here. So in inside of the alternator, it's gonna some things are gonna happen with the uh, integrated circuit, and it's going to ultimately ground out until it's excited, and then it converts to 12 volts. So when your alternator is working appropriately, the battery light should be on with the car off, but key in the on position. So that's and uh, let me take my test light to replicate that. I have my alligator clamp on the 12 volts and this should light up which it does so if I was to start the car up if this was working it should go off but just like we tested before it didn't go off and it stayed on so there's something internally wrong with this alternator and technically I could just say well I'm done testing here but I do want to test the voltage <sighs> voltage is going in here so let's see what they are. I know one of them was about, one of them should show battery voltage. One of them should show like something insignificant. So we tested the center one here. The blue and orange is gonna be our FR, our field regulated. That's the wire, from what my understanding, from my best understanding, this wire is what gets monitored on the computer. It's just showing. FR terminal showing close to battery volts. Let's go to the C terminal and that is showing approximately 8 volts. That is that's what we got there. Wait, I'm just going to show you the difference with them unplugged versus plugged in, what that would look like on our oscilloscope. Um, then we're going to take a waveform, then I'm just going to throw the, all the alternator in here and then we'll, we'll compare it after, after the fact how that looks. Here we are. All right, everything's hooked up. Uh, well, the plug is disconnected, and this is what we got before we actually hooked up an oscilloscope. So our uh, FR terminal is going to be B on the channel. It's at a 20 volt uh, scale here. I want a five second per division table. We have eight volts on the C terminal, and again, this is disconnected. So when I connect everything, uh, our red trace here uh, should change and our B obviously will change. But this is just everything disconnected. So let's see what happens. Bam. Uh, Alright, so now, oh shoot, don't do me like that, man. Well, we got to be going low. So, whew, it's getting cold in here. <laughs> On our green trace, uh, if you remember, we had like a default mode before. It was at 33%. 33% is a pretty low cycle, uh, duty cycle. And uh, But we do see our 
duty cycle here on our FR terminal high and that's pretty much moderately high here also on the uh, C channel so assuming that everything is working appropriately no load conditions we should have a low duty cycle on the FR terminal so this should be gapped up more versus being as closed off as it is and high so a low uh, maintenance will require a low voltage or low duty cycle on our FR terminal and the same could be said with our C channel so our alternator isn't working our computer is has a uh, low voltage value the average voltage is really low at 1.7 volts so it should be commanding this alternator to work higher at a higher efficiency let me disconnect this battery charger uh oh my oscilloscope got disconnected so despite um, seeing a high output it's not reflective of the alternator the alternator is not doing anything so we're not seeing 14 volts so there's something internally wrong with the alternator obviously and needs to be replaced so I'm gonna go ahead and do that because it, it I I'll be honest I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what's wrong with it as far as why it's not outputting because there could be something wrong with the 12 volt side the battery side even though the um, the demand is out there, the alternator is just not putting out any voltage. One thing I didn't really understand uh, as far as the C channel go, because the the P, uh, the fuel regulated channel seems to be working normal under like high load demand. But my thing is, I didn't understand why the C channel wasn't closed off like it's supposed to. So I mean, I maybe I think the uh, waveform. I, I'm I don't want to say it was incorrect, but if I turn the lights on, this is supposed to have a higher duty cycle, like it's supposed to be closed off, just like the um, FR channel but it's not and that's one thing I didn't quite understand but this is you know we're just learning um, and comparing the data that's why I'm, that's why I got this up here so I'm gonna get the new alternator in here and we're gonna look at it this is my screenshot of how it looked before and we'll definitely take a look at it after all right so here we are we got our alternator replaced brand hammer new from right from O'Reilly's high quality Ultima not it go. And I'm gonna put it this way: this was the easiest alternator you will ever replace, and especially if you're experienced, man, you'll throw this joker right on in there. And uh, I'll tell you, it took every bit of like 15 minutes, if that, for me. Um, labor time on this, if you're it just if you're curious, it's gonna be 0.4 hours. So let's get to testing this, compare the data. Uh, all right, so we're gonna check our middle wire here, this blue one, the uh, L terminal. And remember, before it was, it would illuminate with the car, with the engine running. So naturally off, we're supposed to get a light inside the car, which we do. This is replicating that light inside of there. So when I cut the car on, this should go off. So remember, before it was on. Now, it's off, no more illuminating light. So let's look at the actual live data now. Go down here and pull up our alternator management system PID data. So I do have the lights on and stuff. Um, 
go here to pull those up. Let me cut the lights off. Cut the headlights off here. All right, so look at our numbers now. So before we had a command of 84% or somewhere around 80% and it was not meeting that expectation. Now they're matching. Remember, like I said before, when you go to test this, you want to have a desired, you want to tell that component to work and you want your secretary to do what you tell her to do. And uh, she's working like she's supposed to. So the one that we fired and uh, installed in this place, she's working fine now, so she's like a good employee. What, uh, what we're gonna do next is look at the waveform data and compare that. All right, here we go. We got the vehicle running now. There's no load present. And uh, you can see that the computer has limited the FR terminal voltage here on channel B to nine volts before uh, let me let me turn the load on and show you. Currently got the headlights on. It's increased the current going to the FR terminal there, and it's allowed to uh, charge up a lot more. So the lower the voltage, the lesser the load. The higher the voltage, the higher the load. So it, it makes sense now. Now let me show you what it hap what happened before on the other one so let me see here so here's our old one here's our old screenshot we can see on the FR terminal there that it was a higher output it was um it was oh shucks I know I know I know I know I know it was a you know what why did I do that it was a gallery it was around 12 volts with the old alternator in there. So the computer was trying to force it to operate, but it couldn't meet the demand. And um, we didn't get the uh, 14 volts that it was supposed to output originally. But now uh, we have reflection on the uh, C terminal. You know, that's expanding. That's also increasing voltage value as. Uh, the C, uh, the FR terminal fluctuates also, so we do have change on both of them, unlike before. All right, so everything's working out. Uh, we do have the recipe for a working unit. I mean, we did check the uh, FR terminal, which made battery voltage. The L terminal, which was battery voltage, uh, with the key on engine off, and then we had here. Uh, the C terminal which made about 8 volts and we saw an oscilloscope that it was um, oscillating up and down uh, with the connector disconnected and connected so you know what I, I think more about it now there was something wrong with that L terminal uh, simply because it grounds out when there's something internally wrong with it and you have to have that it has to accept the 12 volts to operate like it's supposed to. So if you don't have 12 volts going to that L terminal or it's, it's not capable of supporting it, it's not going to work appropriately and that's what we had going on here because if you look back in hindsight at the data, the, the um, C terminal, the FR terminal seem like they want to work appropriately. You know, the computer wanted to control it, but the car, the alternator just wasn't able to accept it and send out the uh, voltage like it was supposed to on a battery terminal. So, that seemed to have been the problem with this particular case. Like, there was something internally wrong with just that terminal in particular. Um, so, um, but yeah, other than that, you know how to test this alternator. You got this, uh, the 2012 Hyundai Elantra. And uh, I want to go to the gym, man. But other than that, hit that link. Subscribe to the channel. Stay informed. Have that reassurance on my work. See you on the next one.